Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody on the phone line and also on the internet. And we're going to get into another lesson. It's, it's a real simple lesson and something that we might often overlook. I was looking at my notes and it seemed like I, I overlooked it as a whole for a few years because I couldn't believe how fast time is flying that I haven't did exactly, did this exact lesson, even though we touch on things in the lesson, but I haven't did this ex exact lesson since 09, and that's a long time. So we're going to get into it, and obviously from the title you should have an idea what it's about. It's about your big mouth. And that's something, that's amazing that something as small as your tongue can get you in a, in a world of trouble. But that's exactly what the Bible say. And somebody might think, make light of it, but we know better. When you get some understanding of the word, we know that that's an important very important part of serving God, just simply watching what you say. That's why the Bible is going to let us know it's good if you're not sure or if you got any doubt, the best thing to do is just be quiet. That works all the time. We don't even have time because we're going to deal with tonight is the 14th day of the second month. So we're going to have a little second Passover service for some people that didn't observe it. We got people that's going to watch online, that's going to observe it at the end once we get through, because we want to make sure it's dark. We got some people possibly in LA that's going to do it, so we want to make sure it's dark there as well, so we're going to do it at the end. So in, in short, it's a whole lot of scriptures that I could have had in this lesson, but because I don't want to keep you out here till midnight, I, I, I cut them out. But the Bible say, even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. That tells you a whole lot. That says a mouthful right there. And I seen that actually, I never, you, 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 you might get some understanding of a verse here and there, but it is really something when you see it in action. And I saw that firsthand and it really amazed me. What you mean? That means I seen a brother and I had an impression in my mind of this brother. I had seen him around. He was, when I was at the Israel of God in Chicago, this brother was around for a long time. And I just knew this brother was real wise because he didn't never say nothing. And that was my impression of him. I mean, that brother standing around. I said, that brother's sharp until he opened his mouth. He had me fooled, I ain't gonna lie. But I, then he started talking, I said, who the heck is that? It was, it was like night and day of the impression I had in him. So I understood exactly the meaning of that scripture when he said, even a fool is counted wise when he hold his peace. I saw it in living color. And that's the way it is. Like it's a saying, they said, you know, people might, even if you're thinking bad of somebody, even if you think, well, they, 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 they might be a fool. It's an old saying, it's better for somebody to think you're a fool than you to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> so along those lines, that's what we're going to deal with t t uh, tonight. And as you see, the title is, Shh, be quiet. I told Nehemiah, I said I had to get like him, come up with these fancy titles. I can't let him outdo me. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> but that's a good title. One, a few weeks ago, we had, since we had a Bible study on uh, Wednesday night, on, all on the conference line where people call in. We get people calling in from all over. What reminded me, gave me an idea for this title, a sister called from somewhere, Wisconsin, somewhere recently on Wednesday night, 
and she was talking about how she had to check herself and and she was at class another bible class and get and get got into it with a, a brother or a couple got into it and she said and he shushed me <laughs> and he shushed me i couldn't believe he shushed me but sometimes we need to be shushed don't we so we're going to get a little shush in the night proverbs 18 chapter proverbs 18 chapter See, we know that's just a polite way to say shut up. And the Bible is telling us we need to shut up. Be very careful what we say when we do open our mouth. Like they say about people on death row and stuff like that, they say, well, it's a saying about that. They say, well, we, we would prefer to let some guilty people go let a whole lot of guilty people go and don't kill them on death row than to kill one innocent person. And that make a lot of sense. So that's the same way you should think with your mouth. You, you, you might miss out on saying something you need to say, but it'd be better than saying something you don't need to say. Just one time. Just like when it comes to bringing accusations. Job had three friends. They, they brought, they heaped all kind of accusations on Job because of the drama that came on him, and they didn't have a clue. They didn't have no proof. They just assumed they heaped all kind of accusations. But it would have been better for them, even if Job was wrong, had did something wrong, just to be quiet and, 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 and let it go since they didn't have no proof. They would have did well to do that because they got in trouble with the Lord. They pushed Job to the max. But they the ones, ultimately, who the Lord said, you better go make a sacrifice, take it to Job, or else I'm going to deal with you after your folly. Because I'm going to accept Job. Job had made God mad, but nowhere near like they did. Because it was their fault. Job, he, <clears throat> he lost control. But now, shh, be quiet. Proverbs 18 and verse 20. Go ahead. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Uh-huh. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. See, he said, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. In other words, your mouth is going to determine it. Your mouth will determine whether you get some good or some bad in a lot of instances. Even when it comes to getting into God's kingdom. That's amazing that somebody going to let their mouth stop them from getting into God's kingdom. Something that don't mean, that don't mean nothing really. So he said, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Verse uh, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh -huh. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now isn't that something? That's a real big statement right there, isn't it? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit there. So he's talking about they that like to talk. If you're somebody that like to talk, that talk a lot, you're in more jeopardy anyway. Somebody that's, you know, sometimes people, they do look down on people that's quiet. They look down on people that's quiet. They say, well, they ain't saying nothing. Like something wrong with that. <laughs> they don't never be saying nothing. Hey, according to the Bible, that's a good trait. That's a good quality to be able to keep your mouth shut. But he said, they that love it shall eat the fruit there. But he said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Back up to the 13th chapter. Proverbs 13, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, uh -huh. but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Go ahead. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. Now, he talk about a son hearing his father's instruction. That's one of the things that hinder a lot of 
a lot of times hinder us from hearing some instruction is a lot of times we talking and can't hear it. Because you can't hear too good when you're talking. So he said, why son hear his father instruction, but a scorner hear if not rebuke. Verse 2, a man shall eat the good by the fruit of his mouth. He said the same thing again. Go ahead. But the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. Uh -huh. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Now you see what he said? He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Obviously we know you got to do some other things. But this is important to do as well. Because he's equating keeping your mouth with you keeping your life. That's a, that's a big statement. And I experienced a couple of times, even this past week, dealing with some brothers, more than one, just can't shut up. And don't know that that's going to be the very thing going to get you in trouble or keep you in trouble. He said, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but what? But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Ooh, that's a big statement, isn't it? Just talking, just running your mouth when you don't need to even be running your mouth. So that sounds like that's pretty fitting. Shh, be quiet. That'll help out in a lot of situations. So, a simple saying like that, right? See, so maybe sometimes we do need to be shush, don't we? According to this, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. You bring it on yourself. You might have been okay if you just would have been quiet. We go, before we go to James, let's read something Jesus said. Go back to, go to Matthew. We're going to go to the New Testament because people like to do away with the Old Testament and act like the New Testament usurped it. A lot of people do anyway. Let's look at Matthew uh, 12. We're going to throw this in that. Matthew 12. See what Jesus thought about it. Matthew 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse, uh, let's see, where we want to start. Matthew 12. Pick it up at verse uh, 35. Jesus is going to tell us the same thing because the whole Bible is one. The whole Bible go together. 12 and 35. Okay, go ahead. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. See, out of the good treasure of his heart he bringing forth good things. That's out of his mind. But he even going to say it's, gonna, it's coming out of his mind because what you say come out of your mind. Go ahead. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. Uh-huh, go ahead. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, that's, real, that's a real big statement, isn't it? Jesus talking now. If you didn't believe Solomon, how important it was to be quiet, maybe you'll listen to Jesus. People say they definitely believe on Jesus. Well, he said, I said, and this goes to show you people in the average church say you ain't got to do nothing. They can't, they need to be quiet when it comes to saying that. Because he even telling you better watch what you're saying with your mouth. He said, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So you need to be very careful, don't you? The Lord going to call you up on it. See, we don't know how important the tongue is. Hey, just like the Lord talk about don't steal and don't murder and don't commit adultery, even in the Ten Commandments, he's telling you to watch your tongue. The one thing he mentioned, well, he talk, you know he talked about lying all over the Bible, but in the Ten Commandments, he talked about lying on your neighbor, bearing false witness on your neighbor. That's just as deadly as you killed him. To the Lord, it is. See, we don't look at it like that. We think we can get by saying some crap with our mouth. We think we can get by with that. You got people that might consider themselves good because they would never even think of killing somebody. But you would kill them with your mouth. You're still killing them.
So he said, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's why I try to practice. If I'm not sure about a situation, I try to practice. Shh, be quiet. Because you don't, like I say, you, I'd rather somebody, I'd rather somebody to be wrong and I don't tell them right away than me to be falsely accusing somebody of something. I'd rather them be wrong. Because the one thing I understand about the Lord, if I need to tell somebody they wrong, the Lord going to make it plain anyway. The Lord always make it plain. It's just a matter of time. I didn't have people that did stuff. And I said, ooh, I wish I would have got them when they did that. And then the Lord let me know. That's all right. They're going to do it again. Just lay on them. Just wait in the bushes on them. And sure enough, they do it again. So you ain't even got to worry about it. So he said, every idle word that men shall speak, shall they give account of thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, uh -huh. and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. See, by your words. Just by your words alone. Now go to James. Now go to James, the third chapter. That show you Jesus in line with what Solomon was saying in Proverbs. James 3. But Solomon told us the same thing Jesus said. If you keep your mouth, you can keep your life. We're going to look at some examples of even somebody, if they wouldn't have just been running off at the mouth, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have got killed in the Bible. Just running off at the mouth. No, unnecessary. It's just like when I was coming up, at one, at one time, they used to call me, had a, 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 an initial for my name, and, and had a lie behind it. Just lying for no reason. Ooh, he lied. Even my mother used to say, boy, he'd be a good politician. I guess they'd be lying, huh? James 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. James 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Uh-huh. See, the more that you have the opportunity to run your mouth, the more in jeopardy you are. Go ahead. For in many things we offend all. Mm -hmm. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And they will also to bridle the whole body. See, that, that show you how important and how difficult it could be to bridle the mouth. Because he said, if you can bridle that, your words, you can bridle the whole body. Verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth mm -hmm. that they may obey us. Mm -hmm. And we turn about their whole body. Now, that's, that's something. You got a, a, a huge hoy, horse, and you can control him by putting something in his mouth. Go ahead. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, mm -hmm. yet are they turned about with a very small helm, mm -hmm. whithersoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. See, though the tongue is one of the smallest members, it can cause the most trouble. The tongue definitely causes more trouble than really any other member. It can definitely causes more trouble than the foot. You can't kick that many people. He said, behold, how great a matter a little fire can do. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. Go ahead. A world of iniquity. Mm -hmm. So is the tongue among our members. Uh -huh. That it defies the whole body. Mm -hmm. And set it on fire the course of nature. Mm -hmm. And it is set on fire of hell. See, the, the tongue can mess everything up. That's why the world is going to end up in, in World War III. Because of some words somebody said. People start talking words 
and now the star fights and the star wars and everything. Just because of some words. And then you didn't put it out there, then you don't want to back down or you didn't say something you can't back up. Go ahead. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed mm -hmm. and has been tamed of mankind. Uh huh. But the tongue can no man tame. See, that's that's you got your hands full with the tongue, especially if you like to use it a lot already. You got your hands full. He said the tongue can no man tame. Go ahead. It is an unruly evil uh -huh. full of deadly poison. See, he said it's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. You can tame it if you're trying to serve the Lord, though. He ain't saying it absolutely, because else he wouldn't be talking about it if you couldn't tame it by serving the Lord. But without the Lord involved, and you just on your own, you in big trouble. Go ahead. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Uh huh. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Uh huh. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my brethren. These things are not to be so. See, he said it shouldn't be that way. That's why they got a saying, say, if you don't have nothing good to say, do what? Don't say nothing. That's a good saying. Even if you got to say something to correct somebody, it's a way to say that. Go ahead. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? See, you talking about your mouth. It's sending forth all kind of signals. Send forth blessing and cursing. But a fountain don't do that. A fountain don't send forth sweet water and bitter. What else? Can the fig tree, my brethren, that they are olive berries, either a vine, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain yield, both yield salt water and fresh. See, it can't happen. So the tongue shouldn't do that. But go to James 1. Back up two chapters to James 1. James 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. James 1 and verse 26. Okay, go ahead. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but, de but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. See, that... See, that'll prove you out right there. If you seem to be religious, but you can't control your tongue, your religion is in vain. That's all it is. He said, you seem to be religious. He said, he deceiveth his own heart. His religion is in vain. 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Mm -hmm. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction mm -hmm. and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Okay, that's good. Skip back up now to verse uh, 19 and we're going to read that. Go ahead. Because he's going to give you the answer to all of it. And that's what the title is. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, mm -hmm. let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. See, that's what comes with running your mouth sometimes. You end up getting mad and you really run your mouth the wrong way. You really didn't say it's something you don't need to say. Because why? Because you didn't got angry. So that's why he put all that together. He said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. And even when he talk about sometimes you might not can't help but to be angry. And it might be justified that you angry. But in, in uh, Ephesians, he said, be ye angry and sin not. And that the, probably the beginning of you sinning when you're angry is going to be with your mouth. You might turn around and do something too, but it'll start off with your mouth. So he said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Why? Verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Okay, that's good. Let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs, the 25th chapter. And we're going to read a few one-liners, but they're going to say a lot because we ain't going to read the Ten Commandments. We know that in the Ten Commandments, the Lord tell us not to bear false witness against our neighbor. That's just as important as not committing adultery, not stealing, 
And sometimes we can bear false witness against our neighbor even unintentionally, but you're still doing it. That's why you got to be careful what you even repeat from somebody. You're repeating something and you don't even know whether it's true or not. So you bear false witness even, you, even though you might be calling yourself doing it unintentionally. You're still doing it. And that's still a problem. Just like I seen this brother Bowie trying to get this land in Riverdale and get the church and they trying everything to stop him but you know, we be going to these meetings over there but the, uh, now somebody done put on the internet put on the internet that uh, he trying to start an Islamic center. Oh, no. See but, but the, the, the police chief he, he said I don't know if he made it up or he said it but somebody done called him on the car and said he say, who said that? Where it come from? He said, I don't know. Well, why you say it then? You the one repeated it. We heard you say it. But he, if he didn't make it up, he got it from somebody. It's still a lie. So now he getting jumped on. Because he didn't bore a false witness. I guess they trying to do like they was doing Barack. Say it's Muslim. Huh? <laughs> but now, Proverbs... 25, and we're going to read one verse, verse 18. Go ahead. A man that bears false witness against his neighbor is a maul uh -huh. and a sword and a sharp arrow. See, that's how dangerous just somebody to use in their mouth the wrong way. A man that bears false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. That means, hey, that's a weapon in his hand he's using on his neighbor. Let's see it again. Go to the 12th chapter. Proverbs 12. See, he told you a lot about the tongue in Proverbs. Proverbs 12, we're going to read the same verse, verse 18. Go ahead. There is that speaking like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue is the, but the tongue of the wise is help. See, now that's just the opposite. He said, there is that speaking. Like the piercings of a sword. So you got some people that's speaking like the piercings of a sword. But on the other hand, you got the tongue of the wise as health. Somebody that's wise, they're going to bring some health to individuals. That's what they're going to be looking to do. And if they can't bring no health, they ain't going to be bringing the piercings of a sword. Go ahead, read a little further. 19. The lip of truth shall be established forever. Now, that's, that's a big statement. The lip of truth shall be established forever. But what? But a lying tongue is, a, is but for a moment. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. Now, go to the 11th chapter. Back up one more chapter. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Proverbs 11. All this is just from talking. Verse 9, go ahead. And hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. See, he said hypocrite. How's he do it? He didn't say with a gun or with a knife. He said a hypocrite with his mouth, just with his mouth, destroyed his neighbor. You can destroy somebody with your mouth. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Skip down to verse 13 and read that. Go ahead. A talebearer reveal a secret. Uh-huh. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. See? That's what happens. You don't even have to think it's wrong, but you still reveal in secrets. You reveal in tales. Then you still in trouble. You're still using your tongue the wrong way. A tale bear reveal of secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceal at the mouth. Because see, a lot of times we think we're supposed to say everything that's on our mind. I'm glad a whole lot of things I didn't thought, I didn't let come out of my mouth. I wanted to kiss myself later. I said, whoo, God, I didn't say that. Whoo, whoo. Hey. 
whole lot of times. Because I know I done put my foot in my mouth a, a number of times. So I start trying to practice that. Say, well, maybe I just better wait on now. And I thank God later. So he said, tell Barry, reveal the secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceal it the matter. See, sometimes it ain't nothing wrong with concealing the matter because you don't even know what revealing it gonna, it ain't gonna do no good. Just to run your mouth. But now, go to uh, Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. See, this is real basic, but it's real important. Proverbs is just as important as what we're here doing tonight, and that is keeping the Sabbath day. Because you can keep the Sabbath day every Sabbath from sundown to sundown, but if you don't control your mouth, you're going to still be in trouble with the Lord. You can go to all the feast days. You can stop eating pork. Don't eat no more pork. But you keep talking the wrong way. None of that ain't going to help you. Proverbs 16 and 27. Go ahead. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, mm -hmm. and in his lips there is as a burning fire. See, somebody that got some wisdom, they might conceal the matter, but he said an ungodly man diggeth up evil. And in his lips, there is a burning fire. See, that means it's somebody like this. He's telling you about somebody that you might have occasion to encounter. Go ahead. A forward man saw a strike. Uh-huh. And a whisper separated chief friends. See, a forward man saw a strike. He's sowing strife. That's why you be careful. That's why I make it a practice. If people tell me something about somebody that ain't been proved, it don't move me one iota. Because it ain't been proved. I see that person, it won't, it won't make no difference to me what I would heard about them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat them the same way. It ain't going to be no, because I know how. I know one thing is always two sides to every story. And I know something else that somebody, just because somebody said it don't mean it's true. So it ain't going to change me. Now, if, if some proof is there and there's something that needs to be addressed, then I know how to do that. But just listen to what somebody say about somebody, hey, that ain't going to move me one iota. So he said, read that again. What verse is that? Verse 28. Uh-huh. A forward man saw a strife, mm -hmm. and a whisperer set of separated chief friends. See, a whisperer separated chief friends. How do a whisperer separate chief, chief friends? Because he's going to say something, and people are going to be gullible enough to go for it. And then they're going to say something that they shouldn't say, and he's going to take that back to them. There's some of the stuff he's taking back it might be true, but hey, it was unnecessary. But now, go to, uh, let's look at an example. Go to 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6. We're going to look at an example of just sometime you need to just shh, be quiet. 2 Samuel 6. Second Samuel 6, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Second Samuel 6 and verse 14. Okay, go ahead. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Mm -hmm. And David was girded with a linen of ephod. Mm -hmm. With a linen ephod. Uh -huh. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. Uh -huh. And with the sound of the trumpet. Okay, now they're moving the ark. 
And this is when they finally got it right, because the first time when they tried it, the brother got uh, killed. Uriah the Hittite, I mean, not Uriah the Hittite, uh, what's, the, what's the guy's name? Uzzah. Uzzah. Uzzah got killed because he touched the ark. But later on, they got it straight. They had the Levites do it, and it went the right way. And they had a great celebration. So it say David danced before the Lord with all his might. And he was girded with a linen ephah. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. So they was rejoicing. They had a great celebration. This was a, this was a uh, godly event because they serving the Lord. But go ahead, 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through, the, through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, mm -hmm. and she despised him in her heart. See, now that's where it started at. Like, it started in the heart, right? But she would have been wise just to keep it there. She might have got over that if she didn't act on it. So... But he saw, she saw King David dancing, and it keep making the point that he was dancing before the Lord. He was leaping and dancing. They had trumpet sound and everything. He was dancing before the Lord. That's what was on his mind. But she obviously had something else on her mind. And see, you can't always attribute what's on your mind to somebody else. And she despised him in her heart. Skip down now. Let's see when she let it out, her heart. Verse 20. Go ahead. Then David returned to bless his household. Now, he done had a good day. This is a good day. Now, now it's going to get bitter at the end. He done had a good day. They served the Lord. Things that went good. What, what, what Ice Cube say? Didn't, didn't know nobody get shot. Because the other got killed the first time they tried it. So it was a good day. Where do he run in problems at? When he get back home. See, a lot of times, that's where people run their mouth the wrong way. Right at home. Don't have to be nobody on the street. It be right at home, a husband or a wife. This is about a wife here. Said, then David returned to bless his household. And what happened? And McCall, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. <laughs> she came out to meet him, too. Go ahead. And said, uh -huh. how glorious the king was the king of Israel today. <laughs> she didn't mean that. <laughs> she got jokes, don't she? <laughs> she said, how glory. Now, we already read she had some issues when she seen him dancing. She seen him dance. She despised him in her heart. So she came out and meet him and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today. Go ahead. Who uncovered himself to who uncovered himself today in the eye, in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly have uncovered himself. See, she had she had a lot of gumption, didn't she? And now she thinking something else. She thinking he trying to get some women or something. It's just like it's funny. I done had a few people question me about well, what, what's going on in L.A. You in L.A. Is there, you know, is a woman out there or something? <laughs> I ain't lying. More than one kind of hinted at it. But the bottom line is I'm trying to serve the Lord. So, and that's all David was trying to do. But I know sometimes people find it hard when you, if you're really making sacrifices or whatever, they find that hard to believe. They say, no, it got to be something else going on. Just like a lot of people, I told you Brother Stevie was in Africa, in Zimbabwe. A lot of people thought his wife was with him. His wife wasn't with him. He might be over there alone, might be over there a year. But I say the same thing. People be in the service. Hey, they have to lead their family. And we in the army. We in the Lord's army. So we doing the same thing. So somebody was asking me early. They were saying, so when you going to be back in Gary on Saturday? I don't know. I'm going to be in L.A. tomorrow, Lord willing. 
But that's the easiest way to, that's the, the, to get the most mileage out of things. So it ain't nothing but about 12 hours different. If you want to hear me preach, come Friday night. If not, one of the other brothers will be preaching tomorrow. That's fine. But go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And David said unto McCall, mm -hmm. it was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father, mm -hmm. and before all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, mm -hmm. over Israel. Therefore, will I play before the Lord. See, now she, she thinking it was, it was about the women out there. And David said, no, nah, it was before the Lord which chose me before thy father. He had to throw that in there. He got a little jab in there because she was Saul's daughter. Which chose, but he wasn't lying. Which chose me before your father and before all his house to appoint me rule over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. That's all he had on his mind. Go ahead, 22. And I will yet be more vowed than thus. Uh-huh. And will be base in my own sight. He said, when it comes to the Lord, I'm going to be more vile than that. Since that's the way you want to look at it. And base in my own sight. But see how just some foolish talking will mess things up. Cause a whole lot of unnecessary debate and argument. He said, I will be yet more vile than thus and will be base in mine own sight. And what? And of the, and of the hand and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Uh-huh. Then he said, concerning them women, yeah, they going to, they going to, I'm going to be had in honor of them. Therefore, what though? Therefore, McCall, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. So it looked like, it looked like, uh, the Lord was, didn't necessarily like that either, did he? Because the Lord controlled that. I don't think it's saying David never laid with her again. I don't think it said that. But it says she didn't have no child until the day of her death. But now, go to uh, 1 Samuel 31. Now, that was a female who should have took the advice of this lesson be quiet because she could have got maybe got over her feelings if she wouldn't have let it out well here's a here's a man that's going to run his mouth at the wrong time 1 Samuel 31 thinking the wrong thing thinking he's going to get a reward 1 Samuel 31 and, and, and verse uh one, go ahead. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Milchusha, mm -hmm. Saul's son. Uh -huh. And the battle went sore against Saul, go ahead. and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Mm -hmm. Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, mm -hmm. lest these uncircumcised come, be, come and thrust me through. See, now Saul is about to die, so he asked his armor bearer to thrust him through, to kill him. Because he didn't want the Philistines to come and what he going to tell us, abuse him. Go ahead. And abuse me. But, the, but his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. So really Saul committed suicide. He probably was going to die anyway, but he committed suicide. He took the sword and did. He tried to get his armor bearer to do it, right? His armor bearer didn't do it. His armor bearer feared God too much to take out Saul because Saul was the Lord's anointed, just like David understood. That's why David, he was trying to kill David. David wouldn't do nothing. David said, look, the Lord going to deal with Saul. I ain't going to touch him. He even had opportunity to kill Saul. Had some of his boys said, look, let's get him. Let me go over there. I'll hit him one time. I won't hit him twice. <laughs> it ain't going to take but one. It'll be a, we'd be done with all that. That would end the whole fighting and war. And David said, y'all too rough for me. So he refused to do it. 
The armor bearer refused to do it, right? Verse 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with it. Now he killed himself, right? The armor bearer killed himself. Go ahead. So Saul died, and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. Now that's how the story went. That's what happened, right? Now go to the uh, first chapter of 2 Samuel. This is right the next page. And pick it up at verse 1. 2 Samuel 1 and 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag. Mm -hmm. And it came and... and it, it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp of Saul with his clothes rent mm -hmm. and earth up, upon his head. Mm -hmm. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. Mm -hmm. And David said unto him, From whence cometh thou? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel I am escaped. Mm -hmm. And David said unto him, how went, the, how went the matter? He said, how did it go? How went the matter? Go ahead. I pray thee, tell me. Mm -hmm. And he answered that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, mm -hmm. and Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. See, now he told, he reported the matter. He said, it, you know, it didn't go good, in other words. Many of them fled, and a lot of them dead, including Saul and Jonathan, which was bad news. For David, even though Saul was trying to kill David, he didn't have nothing against Saul. And he loved Jonathan. Go ahead. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? Uh-huh. And the young man that had that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, mm -hmm. behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, mm -hmm. and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Mm -hmm. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me, and I answered him, and I answered, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me again, stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me, for anguish has come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. Mm -hmm. And I stood upon him and slew him. Because I was sure that he could not live after he was fallen. Mm -hmm. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm, and I have brought him hither unto my Lord. Now he heard what happened. He evidently had to hear what happened, right? What really happened. But now he didn't embellish the story to put himself in it. And he think he going to get a reward for that. See, that shows you you could be thinking the wrong thing and tell a little lie, think it ain't going to matter. He tried to fix it up real nice. But he just signed his own death ticket. He didn't know it. Verse 11. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them, mm -hmm. and likewise all the men that were with him. Mm -hmm. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son, mm -hmm. and for the people of the Lord, mm -hmm. and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the soul. Go ahead. And David said, and David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? Uh -huh. And he answered, I am the son of a stranger and a Malachite. Uh -huh. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid? To stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointing. Ah, uh, see, he said, look, who are you? He had already told him who he was early. He going to get clarification again. He told me he was a Malachite, a stranger. He said, well, how is it you wasn't afraid to stretch forth your hand against the Lord's anointing? Even the armor bearer was scared. Saul told him to do it for real, and he wouldn't do it. He said, how is it you wasn't afraid? You know he probably started telling the truth then. Well, really, I wasn't... Blah, 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 blah. I just made that up. Guess what? Too late. I don't know what to believe now. Fifteen. And David called one of the young men and said, Don't live. Fall upon him. Mm -hmm. And he smote him that he died. See, he died for nothing, didn't he? 
because he didn't do it. His mouth got him in trouble. Trying to think, he went by there, evidently seen and heard what happened, and he, he got the crown and going to bring it to David, think he's going to get a reward, and going to make the story sound a lot better. Sometimes we'll do that instead of just telling the truth. Well, he paid for that. Notice what David said. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, uh -huh. for thy mouth has testified against thee. See, he might have tried to get out of it and tell the truth. David said, hey, your blood on your own head. Because you have testified. Your mouth have testified against you. Saying what? I have slain the Lord's anointed. See, you said that with your mouth. And it wasn't even true. We saw it wasn't true, right? For no reason except he think it's okay, like some people call it a little white lie. Well, that cost him, didn't it? Psalm 34. We almost done. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. It's just like I was talking to somebody earlier. We was talking about preaching to people and how people just don't want to listen. They got this same old traditional mindset and they can't hear the word of God. And they started trying to talk and tell you. Had somebody tell you, well, it don't matter. I, I know, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know him in my heart. And I know I'm blessed. I'm just... I know I'm blessed. I said, how you know you're blessed? Because I woke up this morning. See, all that stuff. I said, you need to know it from the Bible. I ain't got to know it from the Bible. I said, you don't know the Lord unless you know it from the Bible. But people don't listen. Study, study talking but not listening. Psalm 34 and 1. Go ahead. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Okay, skip down to verse 9 and see what else he say. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his, ye his saints, mm -hmm. for there is no want to them that fear him. Go ahead. The young lions do lack mm -hmm. and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Mm -hmm. come, ye, come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Go ahead. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. Now he told you if you desire life and loveth many days that you may see good. One of the ways to achieve it, he said, keep your tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. And if you think you have a problem doing that when you open your mouth, you know what the answer to that is, don't you? The title of this lesson. Shh, be quiet. It even helped. I, I should have put a finger up there to somebody's mouth on the lesson. <laughs> First Peter, the third chapter. First Peter 3. Back to the New Testament. 1 Peter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. 1 Peter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Okay, go ahead. Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another, mm -hmm. love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Okay, so now... Too many people run their mouth talking about the Old Testament done away with and the New Testament is what we live in under and that's all we need and, you know, we got a different set of rules. Look, the same set of laws and standards in the Old Testament apply in the New Testament. That's why they constantly quoting the Old Testament, the New Testament writers were. The apostles, Jesus, quoting the Old Testament. So that's something they need to keep quiet on. Now, we're going to see an example of that because we just read in Psalm that if you love life and will see many days, keep your tongue from speaking God. 
So he said, finally, be ye of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. That's how we should be able to treat one another. Verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil. Not rendering evil for evil. Even if somebody do some evil, you shouldn't, you're not supposed to do evil back to them. See, we don't understand it. We think we can be justified if somebody had done something wrong to us. Look, you can tell them about it, but you, sh you shouldn't be doing evil. It's just like it'll be hard because you don't have a mindset. Somebody walk up to you and slap them. Your first reaction probably be slap them back. But that would be rending evil for evil, wouldn't it? Not rending evil for evil or what? Or railing for railing. Or railing for railing. But what? But contrarywise, blessing. Mm -hmm. Knowing that ye are there unto call, mm -hmm. that ye should inherit a blessing. See, we try to inherit a blessing. Go ahead. For he that will love life mm -hmm. and see good days, uh -huh. let him refrain his tongue from evil uh -huh. and his lips that they that they speak no God. See, that's the same thing that we read in Psalm just a minute ago, right? Psalm 34. Show you, he ain't giving you no new way to do things. It's the, it's the same old way, isn't it? He quoting it directly. He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. What else? Let him eschew evil mm -hmm. and do good. Uh -huh. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Uh -huh. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. Uh -huh. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Okay. One more place. First Thessalonians 4. First Thessalonians 4. See, the whole Bible telling you the same thing. First Thessalonians 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. First Thessalonians 4 and verse 9. Go ahead. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. Mm -hmm. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. See, that should be common sense, right? We should all be taught of God to love one another. So he said, I don't even need to write, write to you about that. But go ahead, verse 10. And indeed you... And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. Mm -hmm. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. See, that's what we need to do. Once we get in the word, that's the only beginning. We should grow in the word. We should increase more and more. Because you, you ain't going to have everything right when you get in the word. But you're going to continue to grow. And you should increase more and more. And what else does he say? Verse 11. And that you study to be quiet. Oh, he said, what you do what? You don't, you don't hear nobody talking about this. He said, study. We, talk, we might talk about studying the Bible a lot, but that's something you need to study too, don't you? Especially if you got a problem running your mouth. He said, and that you study to be quiet. Just be quiet. That, that's going to help you. That you study to be quiet. Go ahead. And to do your own business, mm -hmm. and to work your own, and to work with your own hands, uh -huh. as we commanded you. So I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.